All right, today on uh, Merch University, we have Helen Kinson from Merch Money, aka Merch Boss. How's it going today? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> thanks so much for having me on. This will be fun. Yeah. Um, hey, um, can you tell us uh, like how you got started in uh, merch and like kind of like the your intro? How you? Yeah, absolutely. That? Well, I got started in merch from a certain person named Joe Clay. <laughs> So, no, I mean, Chris Green actually is how I first found out about merch. Um, I was in uh, the Green Room, which is a uh, a Facebook group if you do uh, retail arbitrage and uh, sell on Amazon FBA. So I did that. Um, I can't remember exactly when I joined the group, but I think it was, uh, I had been doing it for about a year. So I think it was around 2015. That's how I met you and I met a lot of other people. Um, and then Chris Green told everybody about merch, and then you took action right away. You started Merch University, you started um, a merch group specifically for the Green Rumors. So I joined both of those. So Chris is the one who originally told me about it, but you're the one who kind of kept me in the loop and made me eventually actually take action. Because I signed up for it, but then didn't do anything. So being in those Facebook groups helped me uh, get more excited about it and and really start to take action. So thank you so much. And what's what's crazy is that like when I heard about Merch by Amazon, I remember when Chris came on. I think it was a Green Room show that um, that they do every Wednesday. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you know what? Um, and I actually I think I heard about it when they were first talking about it. And um, no, actually no, I've never even told the story before. Um, they heard about it, but I was I was doing F, I was doing the eBay and FBA a little bit and stuff, and I was like I was like, do I do I want to take on another thing? And I, and yeah. I was like, you know, how's that going to work with the business and like financial and like I I really didn't know, so I kind of waited a little bit, but finally in like I think it was like in um, Feb no January must have been January. I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and sign up. So I signed up, but then there was already a waiting period by then. Oh, wow. Oh, so I beat you with the signing up part. Yeah. <laughs> I signed up during that interview that Chris Green did with the Green Room. I signed up while I was watching that. Yeah. So I, I signed up and got approved right away. And then it was literally a, a full year, maybe even a little longer before I actually put up a shirt. So Well, well no, I actually got, so I got accepted like at the end of April, I think. So uh -huh. it took, took like four months. Uh -huh. And then, then um, right away, then I just kind of like started going crazy about it. It was it was fun then. Yeah, it was awesome. And then you posted about, um, you know, I joined I joined your group right away. And then at some point, you posted about Brianna's uh, VA rental group, and then that helped me so much. That's what really triggered me to take action because I just uh, signed up for her subscription plan of getting designs yeah. every month and uploading those and. That's yeah, how so, it all began. Yeah, because she she was one of the first ones who put out like a keyword guide, and then uh -huh. I found out about her VA rentals, and then um, I bought like two two of her like packs of ten shirts from VA uh -huh. rentals and stuff, and it's just because I wanted to know what other people were doing. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I think that was one of the reasons that I took so long to take action. Partly like what you were saying where I was so busy with FBA and it was rolled out during fourth quarter. So it was like, yeah. you had no time to learn something new. But also I just didn't know anything about graphic design and I was just intimidated that I would do something wrong with copyrights or trademarks or it, there was just, it, to me, it felt like a big learning curve even though it's really not, it's so easy, but that's how it felt to me. Yeah. So, being able to order designs from from uh, Brianna really helped. Yeah, and I remember um, actually the first group I started was that merch talk for Green Rumors, and so yeah. I asked, I, I asked, in that. Uh, yeah, I asked Chris and uh, Raken and Eric if I can um, start that group, and they're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And so, um, actually, I think that group only has like. 100 people in this. I know, and I'm still in there. <laughs> Every now and then, somebody somebody will post something. We should get that going again. <laughs> I know, no, we need to get that going again. So, and then um, I, my first designs came from Glenn Zubia. He made my first couple designs. Oh, awesome. So. I got to talk. I've never actually had a conversation with Glenn. I have no idea why. Like, I've watched yeah. all of his YouTube videos and everything. And I, then, he's awesome. Yeah. And then, um, I think it was last year at the green room meetup where um, I uh, actually 
Glenn was speaking at the Green Room Meetup. That the first time they ever had any kind of like conference or uh -huh. actual seminar there, and then I actually got to speak on like a panel at, at later on that day. So it was fun. Awesome. With, with yeah, Glenn. he's amazing. Glenn was uh, both of you are amazing, but Glenn is uh, he took action right away, and he's the one who did like a hundred thousand or something, or I don't know. He did a lot the first year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think he did like fifty five thousand the first year. Oh, okay, so, maybe I'm yeah. thinking of both years combined or something. I don't know, but he he did really well really quickly. Yeah, and so um, yeah, actually, actually, you know what? When I started um, Merch University, it wasn't until uh, I think it was last. I think it was. Uh, it's been two years now, so I think it was January of two thousand seventeen when I started. Oh, okay. And I was only on the 100 tier when I started. That. That's what's so amazing. Like, I think yeah. I I was one of those people that was just kind of in the background observing because I felt like, well, I'm not an expert. Like, I, I should just observe. But so many people like you just take action right away and it helps everybody because then everybody can learn with you. You don't have to be like this. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I just kind of jumped in and did it. And so it's crazy. to. I just, love it. And it, it helps yeah. so many people. It helped me and it helps so many other people. So thank you for doing that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fun. And it's it's it actually it, ca it caused me to like learn so much and like find other other things that had to do with merch to bring it all together just to share yeah. with everybody. <laughs> and I think another thing like is having a group kind of makes you more mo motivated to do better yourself because now it's like all these people are asking you questions so you're like oh i better like <laughs> up my game i know and it's just like the green room for us you know how yeah. that's still a great group i mean golly yeah they provide people provide so much value in that group so yeah so, so and then uh, now you started the new group the create space one create space university you're gonna yeah. have this whole line of university groups. <laughs> I have another one. I don't know if you know about it. It's called Etsy Princel Etsy Printful University. Oh, okay, perfect. So yeah. like, so now you need like a Kindle book for each one, like a Joe Clay Kindle series. <laughs> yeah, I actually just brought on uh, Monte Whirl. He's uh -huh. I, I made him an admin in the Etsy Printful yesterday. So oh, nice. He's awesome. He, he's all excited. He just won the coloring book from the contest we had uh, yeah. Monday. So the coloring book course. So I'll be interested to see what coloring books he comes up with. And you know what? Um, you're, how, how long has the, when did Merch Money start? Can, when so, did yeah, so I'll talk about Merch Money. Um, oh, let's see. I think our first show was in April. Um, it it kind of coincided. There was quite a few things that kind of prompted it. It um, coincided with my birthday. So I turned 35 and I was like, I really like want to do well this year. <laughs> like it's one of those round number years. I mean, it's, it's an odd number, but whatever. One of those milestone years where you're like, all right, I've been, I've been an entrepreneur for a while. Like let's really start doing a little more. Um, so it's partly that, partly just that I had been watching YouTube for a while and there wasn't I mean, there was there's some women on YouTube, but just not a lot. I felt like, um, so I didn't. I had no idea if I'd be able to start it or not, and I just uh, made a whole list of all the women that I thought were doing really well, and just started contacting them. And um, I accidentally contacted a little too many, and I got seven people pretty quickly that said yes, they wanted to do it with me. And I was like, I'm like, how am I going to have a YouTube channel with seven people? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like maybe I'd have to switch days and rotate. Um, but two of the girls ended up dropping off. So it was just the five of us. And I'm like, well, we'll just see what happens. Let's just all five go on there and just see how it goes. And we've just had such a good time. It's been a lot of fun. And you know what? It seems like y'all have gr um, y'all have grown like really fast in your your channel and just like your videos. But y'all have also I've also seen y'all grow like individually. Are y'all's already starting like y'all's own like little mini groups? You know? I know it. It is. It's amazing. I mean. People always say that quote, and I have no idea who it's from, so help me out if you know, but where it's the, the five people you hang out with the most, like you'll be the average of those five. Exactly. Like that's really how it is going for me. I mean, first of all, I'm probably not the average of those five. They're all above <laughs> me, but, <laughs> but just having those four people in my life has helped a lot. It's definitely helped me increase my, you know, what I'm doing, so definitely try to hang out with people that bring you up and that's that's what we're doing 
How how often do you girls talk like behind the scenes and stuff or during the week and stuff? We have a, a little uh, messenger group set up and we talk every day on there. So wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's awesome and and it's 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 really important to have a community and really I just encourage everyone just don't be afraid, reach out. I mean, the worst someone could do is just ignore your message or not answer, but most of the time people are nice and they'll they'll talk to you. So. I was shocked. I mean, I was I was Brianna's customer. I had just bought designs from her. I had never talked to her before. And I messaged her thinking she'd be like, oh, I'm too busy. Or, you know, I, I thought she'd be polite, but I thought she'd be politely saying no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and instead, she's like, oh, that's a great idea. Count me in. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was so happy. And then the same with the other girls. Like, I barely, I, I talked to them at least once. But, I mean, we didn't talk that often. So it was, it was really... Uh, nice that everybody wanted to do it yeah i totally understand because I, when i started at merch university and then um i, I remember we're like people were talking uh, i mean like when i uh i talked to like margaret and we start kind of started that merch talk show for uh, the merch talk show for the youtube and stuff and so we uh -huh. started doing that and then um you know i only know her and just a couple other people and then uh, people in the group they kept talking about this one guy all the time they're like hey you should check out this one guy and this one group and you know it's another merch group and i'm like uh -huh. okay and i kept hearing his name over and over and it was uh -huh. uh, and they go yeah he's, and um, they said i said well who is he and his name's they said his name's michael essany and i'm like oh, oh okay. yeah he's great and so he's, he's another person i still haven't talked to i yeah. gotta add him to the list <laughs> yeah and so um just ran like he and he just started his group i guess and mm -hmm. so um, I think he was like a month in the scrim. And I just I reached out to him. I was like, hey, this, I'm Joe. I'm Merch University. And, um, you know, I heard you, I heard about you from a lot of my members. And so um, I've been talking to him. I talk to him like every day. So. That is amazing. Good for you. It's, it's, and I found like the people that I'm le that I least expect that will talk to me do like it's, it's the people that are just like, you know, average or like not doing very well they're the ones who end up not writing back or ignoring you the people that are like really crushing it and really mm -hmm. doing well they're so nice and they're so receptive and they just want to help everybody and it's just it's amazing yeah another guy was that like rj i met rj through him people were like talking about rj and i'm i've reached out to rj and he's like oh i've watched your show before and so it kind of like mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so I talk to him all the time too. So we we just got to be on their show the other day. That was a lot of fun. I watched it. It was good. It was really that was good. the first time that I've uh, talked to them. So Matt and RJ, that was nice. I would say like one of the biggest like um, things I would say for everybody who's watching or listening is that um, is to watch other YouTube shows. You know, I yeah. mean, because they people give out so much more information when they're talking. Yeah. It's crazy. Really, definitely. I mean, I did that the whole the whole time I've been involved with Amazon. So the past four years, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> but you also have to take action. So once you watch it, you got to try it out right away, mm -hmm. um, or at least like be in a group about it. Like how I joined your group about merch to learn more about it. Like you got to do something, um, and also really try to just reach out to people, go to conferences, do something where you can meet them in person because it, it makes a difference. Like the, the people that I talk to on private messenger and like, or in person, like those people, uh, there's something about just being around them more. Like, just like you said, like we've all, all of us working together at Merge Money, we've all individually grown just because we're talking to each other every day. So that, that makes a big difference. Yeah. So yeah. And I, I, I believe in the take action, you know, you got to take action from what you hear and stuff. So you believe in that? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You take action like right away all the time. Yeah. I, I guess from starting the group and just always wanting to take action all the time. Now, it's so. good. And then you've gotten to meet everybody and you know, so many awesome people. So you're an inspiration. Yeah. I need to, we need to go to like, um, maybe when they have that, I think, like a big merch group. I don't know. They, they, I know they have those a lot. So, yeah, we got to plan a meetup. Yeah. You're, where good. are you? You're in Oklahoma. Yeah. How far is that from Nashville? That's far, right? I don't know. I think it's far. <laughs> are you going to Nashville? Or I'm what? going to Nashville in a couple of weeks, and I'm like, I've been wanting to set up a um, a meetup when I'm out there. So yeah. maybe I'll 
pass by. We'll have to talk later and see if I if we can yeah. do something. Uh, and actually, um, I've been going to Austin for the green room uh, every year for like the past four years. Uh -huh. So last year when I was there, I was like, hey, let's just have a green room meet up here in Austin and stuff. Yeah. And so a lot of uh, merch people, a lot of people from the green room came, but then some other people from just the merch university came too. So nice. it was really good. That's awesome. And so when I was, I knew I was going there this year again, because it was last month in June. And so a month ahead of time, I called the plate that I called Whole, Food, Whole Foods where they had it. We had it at last year, but mm -hmm. we just kind of like hung out on the very top upper part. But I asked them if I can reserve their room. They're like, yeah, it's free and you can come and bring That's your group. Awesome. And, that was a good idea. I saw that you did that. That was awesome. Yeah, they're like, you can bring your group here and it's free and you can have it for like the whole day, the whole night. I was like, all right. And so yeah. I was surprised by that too. I thought it'd be hard to reserve rooms, but I did it. I did a tiny little merch money meetup uh, in New Jersey and um, it was this really nice pizza place. It wasn't just like a, I don't know, it was a nice place. And they had this whole upstairs and I called and asked if I could reserve it. And there was no fee or anything. They just let me reserve the entire upstairs. And wow. we ended up only having a few people, but it was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'll remember that next time when I plan something a little bigger. I couldn't believe it. And actually the people that came from the green room to this year, there's probably like 15 of us, but pretty much everybody there either had an account and they haven't really done anything and they were brand new. So it was mm -hmm. like all newbies. And so mm -hmm. like, they were just like hungry to learn and stuff. And so that's awesome. And I actually had, I opened my computer there and I had um, make merch. I had it open and I'm like, Hey, come make designs. And so people were making designs and then I would, I would email them their design that they made. And so that's they were excited. Great. So, yeah. And so. It's so nice when you meet somebody and you can just try it out right there. Cause it kind of, for some reason, I mean, not everybody has this, but I was one of the people where it just felt like, it was just a little too hard somehow, even though it's so easy. Like it's embarrassing now to be like, oh, it's too hard. But it just feels like, oh, I can't design. I'm not a graphic designer. Like, <laughs> There's this little barrier you have to get past. And that, uh, so let's go with your method. You're, you uh, brought all your designs from Brianna, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely, I mean, this is just what I did. I, it's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best way. I mean, it. it I had a block where I just felt like I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't do designs, which is silly. Like my brother uh, started doing it once he watched the Merch Money show. So he, I mean, he's a pharmaceutical rep and he designs shirts on the over app while he's in the waiting room waiting for doctors. And he's, he already like got to the tier 500 just in the last month or two. Like just, wow. he'll be like feeding his little baby and making a shirt on an app. And so to him, it's easy. And it's like, he had no barrier. He's like, oh, this is the easiest business ever. Like I'll just do it on the side. For me, there was a barrier where I was just like, I can't design, like, I don't understand trademarks, or I don't understand keywords. Like I was used to just buying stuff from Walmart or wherever and shipping it to Amazon. So I didn't have to make my own listings. I didn't have to do know anything about keywords. I didn't have to design anything or create anything. So I had all these blocks where I was like, oh, I don't know how to design. I don't know how to make a listing. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. So it helped me to just get started because she did all of it. <laughs> so it was like, you could buy a pack of designs. She had the keywords, she had everything. All I had to do was put it up. And so that was just the way I learned was through her. Like as I got the designs, I'd be like, oh, that's a niche I never thought about. Or, oh, that's a good way to do keywords. I didn't think about that. Like she's, she's really good with keywords and making sure to include all different things that relate that I would have just been like, this is a dog shirt. And then with her, she like adds all this other stuff. So it, um, it's better. So anyway, so I learned from that. And then eventually I was like, I bet I could get these designs cheaper if I do a bulk order. So I emailed her and I was like, you know, do you do bulk orders? How many can I get? And I ended up ordering 700 and then another 700 a few months later. So by the end of last year, I had gotten just about 2000. Um, so that's how I did it. And then through that process of all year, just getting designs from her and uploading them, it made me feel more confident because I was like, okay, I've seen up close and personal 2000 designs. Like I've seen the keywords, I've seen what the design looks like, I've seen the niches. So now it's not so, it's a little easier for me to design my own shirts. Cause I'm like, okay, I get it. Like I know how to do this. <laughs> so uh, that's just how I got past my 
initial being scared of designing, which is, I mean, it's so silly. Like whoever's watching this, if you haven't designed a shirt, it's not hard. <laughs> so <laughs> don't be like me, but at least, I mean, find a way to move past your fear. So if it takes buying 2000 designs, it takes buying 2000 designs. <laughs> and what tier are you on now? I'm on tier 4,000. Wow. Okay. That that's so that so buying those designs has got you to afford the four thousand tier. Yeah. I mean, I literally only since I've started the merch money channel have I tried to design my own things, and I only did a few. Like I did that one shirt that you guys gave uh, had the graphics for those uh, camping tent camping graphics room. and stuff. Yeah. I made a shirt from that, and I made a shirt um, using Make Merch and like a few other things. Um, but, and then I learned more about research. Now I have Merch Informer and, um, you know, using that. So I'm doing more research, doing more with keywords, doing more with everything now. <laughs> so now I'm trying to take it to the next level. So I've uploaded all these designs, like how can I make them sell better? How can I um, research and find new designs? So now I'm, I'm uh, using Penji where you have to tell the designer what to make. They're, they're very good designers, but you, um, just tell them what you want. So using Merge Informer, I can do research, and then um, you know, based on my research, have the designer create a design specifically for what I think will sell. So, do you just take like um, like say say you find a design or like a unicorn design? I know you've mentioned that before. Yeah, I and that's one where the only reason I did that. So normally, like if you're trying to design T-shirts right now, you can't really go to the big niches that everyone's going for because there's so many shirts that in order for yours to stand out, you're going to have to like do a lot of advertising or do something because there's our, everything is all of the really popular niches tend to get flooded out pretty quickly. But with pop sockets, it was still new enough that I, I pulled up how many unicorn pop sockets were listed and how many people were searching for them. And I'm like, I think there's room to put a few more out. So that was the very first design I requested from Penji. And I requested three of them and I got three different pop sockets. I, I looked for words that people were searching for, for pop sockets. And one of them was cute. One of them was glitter. One of them was rose gold, um, girly. So there was like four or five keywords that people were searching a lot. And I combined them all together. So I did like rose gold, unicorn, glittery gold, whatever. And so because of that, then a, a lot of, not a lot of people, but like nine or so people bought it right away. So. Where do you find those keywords at? I used uh, keywords everywhere and I was doing it myself. So I would just type in words that I, <laughs> this is how I did it. It's not the right way, but this is how I did it. I would type in words that I just thought people would be searching for. So I'm like, okay, this, these are 20 year olds, like pop sockets on their phone. Let me think of words that I think they would be searching for. So I'm like, cool pop socket, <laughs> cute pop socket. And then I would write down like how big those searches were. So I came out with like 25 that that were doing really well, had a ton of people searching for them. And then like a couple days later um, in, Mer in the Merch Empire group, somebody posted a list of 100 top searched keywords for pop sockets. So I immediately looked at that and compared it to my list. All 25 of mine were on that list, but then there was another 75. So I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So I've, I've definitely used that list. And what I do is just try to make sure I have like at least five keywords from that list in every listing. So it's like specifically keywords that people are searching for, for pop sockets. And you know what, like, from you saying that all those words like i don't think of that um that nor the average guy would think about you know? yeah well those are all words like if you have that list if you don't contact anthony and be like how do i get this list because it's a, it's a really good list um and i you know i had painstakingly found 25 of them myself but it was easier just to look at the list um and what i did oh sorry i uh separated out the uh the list, so they have it just like by, sorted by the most popular search words all the way down to like the hundredth most popular. But what I did is I sorted into two columns. So I have a column of all this like subject, like the main thing. So like unicorn would be the main thing. 
or like a palm tree or something like that. And then on the other side, I have a list of all of the adjectives. So like cute, pretty, um, cool, all the, the words that could describe those things. So then that way it's easy. Like I pick one of the subjects that I'm gonna tell the Penji designers to make. And then I pick like four or five of the words that could describe that. So if it's a palm tree, like what words could describe a palm tree? I go down the list and I pick like the five, four or five that can describe a palm tree and then just put them in there. And that, that's all you have to do is, I mean, so far that's been working for me. Do you also do that for your shirts too with the adjectives and the? I would like to. I haven't had uh, really a lot of time to go back and do that like I want to. So I have my shirts listed. Um, with but the already the the ones they're that already listed yeah. yeah they're already listed with keywords I would like to go back and make sure that um, you know there might be words now that are searched more than back then you know like some of the words may have changed over the last year plus the competition and things like that have changed a lot so I am hundred percent sure there's a lot of words I could add or take out and change a little with the listings I already have um, so it's on the list <laughs> and you know what I heard from some other people that. Um, by using those words that you mentioned, like that has sold them like tons of pop sockets. It helps tremendously, tremendously. And if you can just put the word right in front of pop sockets. So you have to be careful, like you can't just put pop sockets in your brand or anything like that. But if you use exactly what they told you to use, so pop sockets grip, grip yeah. if you use that and you put the word right in front of it, so you're like cute pop sockets grip, and then the rest of your description. Um, then it, it helps a lot. So would you put like cute pop sockets unicorn? Uh, the way I do it is I just pick one of the words. So unicorn is also a word that's searched a lot. So I just pick which word I think will do the best or that it most describes the pop socket. So I would do like unicorn pop socket and then the rest of pop sockets grip. I do the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the subject just describe it as best you can using as many keywords as you can. So I'd be like, uh, like say if you had like, uh, let me see here, like a bear or something. Or, you just or, pick, you pick a panda bear. Yeah. You pick whichever word you're targeting and put that right in front of pop second. So if you, if bear is not searched as often as cute is, you could just do cute pop socket grip and then describe the bear. But if bear mm -hmm. is the word you're targeting, you would put bear pop sockets grip and then the rest of the words. But that's okay. how I start my titles with one word that's searched a lot, pop socket grip, and then the rest of the title, I, you know, describe it the best I can. Okay. In the title. In the title. Yeah. Okay. And then I am, a, oh, a lot of people are either not doing bullet points or not doing that much with the bullet points or just doing very basic. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the people that I feel like the bullet points are important. I don't know for sure. Like I'm definitely not an ex a keyword expert yet. So they might be right. I might be wrong. I'm really not sure. But I take my time and, and do bullet points and description. I do everything. Anything that can be filled out, I fill it out. Uh, so to me, I'm like, why waste the opportunity to use keywords? What have you learned just from getting all these um, 1400 designs that you got from um VA rentals, like how, how do like people, they structure like the keywords that from there, what have you learned from how, how yeah, and it was more, it was more like 2000, the 1400 was just the uh, bulk yeah. orders, but I had been on the subscription plan. So, um, from her, uh, she would be able to describe it better than me. Cause I literally would just copy and paste <laughs> so bad, but she does like, she thinks about like, who's going to be using this. So if it's like, maybe there's certain occupations that use it. Like maybe it's doctors, nurses, medical assistants. Like, so she'll think of like three or four or more professions that might be using it or types of people that might be using it. Then she'll think about like, where are you wearing it? So where are you wearing this shirt? So then she'll add in like hospital or whatever, <laughs> whatever the words are. I was on the medical train of thought, but she'll add in all the places you might wear it. And then, um, that, that's about it. I mean, just as many like ways that you can wear the shirts and, and words to describe the shirt and people that might be searching for that shirt. You want to put all of them in there. So like you can say like, get this doctor shirt who works at a hospital or something like that, you know? 
she is uh, i should i should have brought one to read because she's good <laughs> at it like i can't even say it and i've literally uploaded 2000 from her so <laughs> i kind of no, just want to be like brianna always do my keywords for life yeah yeah um, it's always I, when i when i got hers you know, it's just, it's really simple just to like copy and paste you know yeah <laughs> yeah and you can always add or take away some later like yeah. i know she still edits like you know she always is up to date on what's the best keywords with me it's like they've still been up there since 2016 <laughs> untouched but it, it's definitely better if you can um you know keep it up to date and add in some more words and what, what did you start pricing those at when you when you got them on there so again this is what i have done it's not necessarily what i would recommend but this is this has <laughs> been my strategy so for me i i started this doing nothing except uploading. So I completely bought everything. Um, and I was fully focusing my attention on RA. So I was doing retail arbitrage, all of that. No focus on merch except to upload the shirts. Um, and that was good because it, it was a kind of a slow, laborious process going through all of those tiers. So the 10 tier, 20, actually I started at 25 tier. I didn't have to deal with the 10 tier, but um, getting out of the 25 tier, getting out of the 100 tier, like it takes a little bit of time. And I was only in the beginning, I was only getting like 10 or 25 a month or something. So it was uh, not a lot of shirts that I had to upload in the first place. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, so I wasn't relying on it for income. So all I wanted to do was make sure the shirt sold so that it wouldn't fall off and I'd have to re-upload it again. I just wanted to make sure that it sold. So I priced them all really low. Um, I think I was doing like $14.99 or something like that back then. Now, um, sometimes I'll even do $12.99. Like I'll, I'm low, low, low. Uh, so I, I stayed low the whole first year, just tried to get as many sales as possible. And then I started focusing on trying to get as many reviews as possible. And I didn't like ask for reviews or anything, but I just made sure the price stayed low. Like a lot of people recommend as soon as you make a sale, you raise the price. And that is good if if the goal is to make money, which of course, like for all of us, that should be the goal. <laughs> but it wasn't for me. Like my goal was just to sell shirts because I wanted to get reviews. So I, um, I kept the price low so that it would sell as often as possible. And then I would get reviews. So I got quite a few reviews on a lot of my shirts, which I really think has helped because those shirts still sell. So I put them up in 2000, very, very end of 2016, but mostly 2017 was the main year. I was just uploading all of the designs from Brianna. And yeah. I just kept the prices low, kept the sales flowing. It didn't require any work on my part except uploading the design. And it wasn't a lot of designs because it was I was still in the lower tiers. So all last year, it didn't take really much effort on my part at all. All of my attention went to RA. And then this year, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to need to spend more time on merch because I really want to grow this. Now I'm in higher tiers. Like now it's easier to up, like spend a lot of time uploading and really start doing research, hit trends. Because I haven't done any trends. Like a lot of people start with trends. All of mine are evergreen. So in some ways that's good because I have a real strong base of evergreen designs with yeah. reviews. So I have that, but now I'm like, okay, well, let me learn trends. Let me learn how to research. Let me learn keywords. Like this has been the year where I'm like, I really need to learn all of that. So now this can really grow into a real business. Um, so my, I plan on increasing all of my prices in September or October. I don't want to wait too long because I don't want there to be a freeze and me lose the opportunity. So I'm gonna just gonna gradually start increasing all the prices starting in September. What do you think you're gonna raise them to? I'm thinking probably seventeen ninety nine. Okay. I don't want to go too high because. I mean, you hear people all the time saying that, you know, just raise the price, know your worth, like know all this stuff. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, I feel like the designs have to be really good if you want to go high prices. Like, I don't know, I could be wrong. So again, you, you gotta do what you feel is right. But for me, a lot of my designs are fairly basic. Like they're, um, you know, they're just text or text with a simple graphic. Like it's not something from an illustrator. It's not something that is super trendy. Like these are just evergreen basic designs. So to me, I feel like if I raise it higher, 
and I don't know the exact number. I'm going to try $17.99. It might be where I can't raise it higher than $15.99. It might be where I can raise it all the way up to $22. I mean, I really don't know yet, but I feel like I'm going to experiment with $17.99 and see if I can still make sales. And I think during fourth quarter, people are willing to spend a little more. So I think that that's going to be where I where I go. What's your, uh, how many do you have live currently? Oh, it's embarrassing. I had so many drop off. I'm, I have been stuck right around 2000 for like three months straight. Like every time I upload some come down. So I'm sadly, I'm exactly where I started. Like when I started merch money, like I'm still at 2000. <laughs> no, you know what? I would say the same thing. Cause like, I think it was uh four, three months ago when I teared uh -huh. up to 4,000 also. Yeah. Like, Cause it, I remember it was right after you teared up. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh man, she teared up to 4,000. And like a month later I teared up to 4,000. Yeah. And, um, and I was at like 1600 designs, I believe. Uh -huh. I was just right at the mark to tear up. And yeah, so, yeah. and then um, I probably uploaded over a thousand designs, but a month, the, these past three uh -huh. months, I've had so many drop off that I'm only at, um, at 2000 now, like 2036. Yeah, exactly. yeah, me too. I mean, I haven't looked exactly today, but it's just like, it, it fluctuates around 2000. I'll drop down higher, drop down lower. Like, but I, <laughs> Amy just hit 4,000, uh, Amy Nicholas on our show. And she's been really crushing it, uploading every day. Like I've actually, my uploads have gone down since I started Merch Money. Cause I just, I think it's just all new for me. Like just mm -hmm. doing the group and doing the show. And um, I want to be like on Facebook, looking at everybody's comments all the time and replying. Like I've never been a big Facebook person, but now that it's like my group, I'm like, oh my God, I want to like reply right away. So I, I have to work on that and, and get back to what I was like. The reason I'm having so many drop off is because I was uploading so many at the beginning of the year, like January to April, I was on a roll. Like I was uploading so many every day. And then from April till now, it's really slowed down what I've uploaded. So, you know, a certain percentage of what you upload ends up coming down. And so now that I haven't increased my uploads, it's like it ends up balancing. So I'm like staying exactly the same place. And here's here's another way I've been thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I have two thousand down, uh, two thousand live or whatever. But um, even just think, of, even if you were pricing them at like fourteen ninety nine, and you're uh -huh. making like a dollar sixty on each one. Yeah. But just think if you sold a hundred of a hundred a day, that's all yeah. out of 2000, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, that's exactly how I've been thinking this whole time, yeah. but you really can, I mean, it's a, it's a balancing act. So for me, it's like, they've been priced low for so long that it's, there's enough of a base there that if I raise it, I think it won't go down too much. Like it might drop a little bit, but the added income will make up for it where I'll make more by having a higher price. So Everyone just has to do their own pricing strategy, what they think, um, and really look at their own designs and their own niches. Because some niches are not as saturated as others. So if you're in a good niche that's not that saturated, you can raise the prices and they'll be fine. But if you're in a niche that is saturated, and a lot of them weren't saturated when I put the shirt up, and yeah. then now they are. <laughs> So you really, I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to keep it low as long as I did because that will help. Like even if your design's not quite as good as someone else's, if you've sold 50 of them and they just uploaded you, theirs, yours is still going to show up. Like it's, so I have that benefit of I've sold quite a few. And I was talking to, uh, I was actually talking to um, somebody and they were telling me that they had a shirt that they uploaded like a year and a half ago and they priced it at 1499. Mm -hmm. And um, it actually had to do with like, you know, Trump. And so, um, but it started taking off. It started picking up mm -hmm. and um, their rank went from like, I forgot like a million. It went down to like 300, 700,000 or something. And then they started selling, they sold like 20 shirts in one day. Wow. And then it dropped to, uh, eventually it dropped to like, it's a rank of like 5,000. Oh, and you're so, talking about Michael Anthony. Yeah, Michael uh, Anthony. Yeah, he so. posted something about that. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, and and he actually like, so, you know, we talk all the, all the time. So yeah. he actually showed me the design. He's like, here's oh, wow. the design. So he was showing yeah. me the design. And I was I was watching it all day. <laughs> I was talking to him. I'm like, oh man, look, it's dropping, it's dropping. And I'm like, awesome. and he, See, and he's, and I then haven't, he, oh, go ahead. 
<laughs> I was just gonna say, I haven't really experimented with trending designs. Like I have been more his strategy of just like evergreens and just get up shirts that will sell like at least once or twice a month and then just not work, you know, but I'm, I'm excited to start figuring out some trending designs and, and going for things like that because uh, now that I have the spots and now that I, you know, I feel like I have a little more time to research and, and really make this, make this good this year. And so when we, what he was telling me, he was like, I'm going to raise this price to 1699. I said, okay. And so he did. And he said, like, he says, I'm still getting sales. And he says, um, so then he said, uh, I'm going to, this is all on the same day. And he's like, I'm going to raise it to 1899 see what happens. And then see later. How, on, see how he's making that sound like that's high. A lot of people start with 1999. And they yeah. think I'm crazy for pricing low. He made it, uh, the way you just described it is like, wow, I can make it 18.99. That's so high. <laughs> and then so I, yeah. I think people should consider that because for whatever reason, the people who price low, uh, really high are more vocal about it than the people that price really low. Yeah. So I think people have the misconception that everyone prices high. And I don't know, like uh, maybe I think I think the people who price high, maybe they just have really great shirts and really great research. I don't know. But for the average person, if you price high, you're just not going to have as many sales <laughs> at all. <laughs> and so I think I think it was a week later. Um, I talked to him and I go, how's that shirt doing? Or maybe even a few days later. And he's like, he says, I'm averaging five to ten sales a day now on that shirt. Wow. So. That is great. Well, he's amazing. He uh, he definitely deserves it and here's another thing if you <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to say that but uh, um if you ever use um the merch informer there's a part of there's a true they have a trending module on there where you can uh -huh. go in there and it's called movers and shakers uh -huh. if you, and if you go through there you'll see his shirt and you'll, <laughs> i hate to say that but sorry michael um, he's not gonna <laughs> he be watching this it. he did post it um, yeah and so um so, so that meaning, really what I'm meaning is that if you go in there and to, to the movers and shakers and merch informer, uh -huh. that really works because we, I, we know of his shirt. And so, yeah. and yeah. it's no, on it, there. It definitely works. I mean, Neil is such a smart guy. Like I have been, it's so fun for me to watch everybody's journey. Like when I first started, I didn't know that I would ever meet any of these YouTubers. Like <laughs> in my mind, they're like YouTubers. They're like these people that are like so amazing out there. But now I've been able to meet a lot of them in person. And it's, um, it's really fun to see like, like Steve Rakin, like seeing his progression, you know, he was just an average guy, like talking about <laughs> eBay. And now it's like, he, you know, he's doing so well. And it's, it's so fun yeah. to like, see, I mean, you're doing so well. So many people have just grown so much in the last few years. And it's, it's really fun to see. Actually, um, Steve, he saw that my channel was growing pretty good. And so like, he offered to help me a lot. So a lot of stuff that I've been doing, over the past year, as I give a lot of credit to Steve. So. Oh, well, I want to give credit to Steve, too. So, Steve, if you're watching, I went up to his meetup in Connecticut right before I started Merch Money. So it was like a week away. <laughs> and I was like, help me. It's really funny. I, I was trying to do it on my channel, but have it be like a brand, like have it separated a little and have it be Merch Money. But for some reason, YouTube um, suspended it or they just like, shut it down so i was like a week away from starting i'm like oh my god we don't have a channel how are we gonna do this so he helped me just start a whole new one like he he tried to convince me to just have it on my channel just have it on the helen kinson channel but i was like i really wanted to say merge money so i just used a different email address and started from scratch so and uh, oh one thing I, that reminds me of just like you know we're talking about crediting these people um will you will you tell will you tell the um story about your uh merch oh, Chris website? Green. Yeah. yeah okay so uh yes first of all so many people have helped me so steve joe i mean everybody has helped me chris green is how i originally found out about merch to begin with and then um he's a big person in, in buying websites so he was so excited when merch came out so this is 2015 he within a few months bought all of the mer <laughs> merch websites so he bought merchmoney.com in 2016 and um i hadn't even uploaded a shirt yet so i think it was like 
I forget exactly what month he bought it, but beginning of 2016. And um, I uploaded my first shirt the end of 2016. So I was already a year behind him. <laughs> then um, I decided to finally start a YouTube channel. I searched Merch Money just to check if anybody used that name. So I saw that it was a blank website and that's as far as my research went. <laughs> I didn't like look and see if anybody owned it. I just saw that there was nothing up. And I was, uh, was like, okay, nobody's using this name. So we uh, did the YouTube channel. And then it started to pick up and you know more people were subscribing and I was like, maybe I should get that website just so nobody else buys it, like just to protect our name and things like that. So I went to go buy it and I'm like, oh, it's sold, somebody has this. <laughs> so I'm like, how did I not check better? Um, so I figured out how to find out who owned it and I was like, oh, of course it's Chris Green, like he's so smart. He, he bought this years ago. <laughs> um, so I messaged him to see if I could buy it from him and um, he, I forget, it, it went back and forth a little bit in the beginning, but then eventually he just gave it to us. And I thought that was so nice. Like he, he could have sold it for thousands and thousands of dollars and he just gave it to us. So it was, it was amazing. How much do you, do you think you were willing to pay for that? <laughs> I was willing to pay like, at least a thousand dollars, but I just, I don't have that much money to go higher than that. But uh, Brianna's like, he's never gonna, she's like, it's worth more than a thousand dollars. But, and it was, she's right. It's definitely worth more than that. So he gave us a big gift. It was really nice. Wow, that is awesome. I, I, that's an awesome story. I like hearing that, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. And he's he's just helped the community so much over the years. And um, he's always a speaker at different conferences. So I've been able to see like, him in person a couple times and I have all of his books. So he did all those free books for prime day. I posted it in merge money and um, he, he was having all of his books for free, which was amazing. His, uh, did you ever look at the retail arbitrage book or? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. The online one was amazing. Like this, he is very smart. I got yeah. it. He get, he's, he's given that away like a year ago and I got it then. So. Yeah, I bought them. I, you know, as soon as I got into retail arbitrage, I, I bought them. And uh, I could just tell, like, back then, even, like, I'm like, okay, this guy's really smart. And he really is. Like, he's um, he's really smart, but he's really helpful and willing to help everybody else. So you need um, to have him on your show. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if we're big time enough for him yet, but <laughs> one of these days, I, we did invite him. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I think one of the best shows that I've seen of you guys is when y'all had, I think it was uh, Neil Lassen on there. Yeah, he's awesome too. Oh my gosh. So many smart people who are so nice and so kind and so willing to share their information with everyone. It's amazing. And then a create since we're all doing create space now, it was that show with Catherine was really good too. So oh, thank you. Yeah, she is amazing. I she is definitely one of those ones where I would never thought I'd meet her, and I put her on a pedestal because <laughs> I I followed her back in 2014. So it's been four years later, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's on our show. And so, are you going to be jumping into the create space, or have you started that, or no? I have not started it. It doesn't mean I won't do it, but um, I have a really hard time like doing different things at the same time. Like I couldn't even do merch and retail arbitrage at the same time. I had to pick one. <laughs> so that's why I bought all the designs. Like I'm one of those people that just has to focus on one thing and I can't really get distracted. Which is, which is good though. Yeah, I hope that at some point I'm better at being able to do more than one thing. I think once, whenever I get around to hiring people, which you know, I'm really trying to push myself to do that soon. I would love to hire some VAs or even actual employees in person. But I think once you have people helping you, it'll be easier to do more than one thing because I can be like, okay, you take over this part, you take over this part, and I'll focus on this new thing. Um, so I would love to do Create Space. I would love to do what Chris and um, Brianna have been talking about the um, Amazon Custom. I actually posted about Amazon Custom a few months ago before I knew about any of these integrations. I, I had bought something from my niece that was like from Amazon Custom. So it was like where you could fill in your names. And so we put like from Aunt Helen and Uncle Bobby. And um, so I love I love the idea of Amazon Custom. So there's like a, a really good integration now with Print Tech. So I really want to do that. That's 
that's on my list. I really can you, can you talk about can you talk about what Amazon custom is for people who don't know? Amazon custom, first of all, Amazon is so big. Like there was a period of time where I was just like, let me see what new company Amazon started today. Like Amazon comes up with a new company almost every day. <laughs> so Amazon custom is a branch of Amazon. And it's it's I guess it's kind of similar to merch, but it's it's a little different. Um it's I think it's just on regular Amazon seller platform. I haven't tried it yet. So if I say anything wrong, I apologize. But I think it's just part of the regular Amazon seller platform and you can upload anything. So it could be a cutting board. It could be a shower curtain. It could be a t-shirt, something for a baby. I mean, anything. And then you fill out your regular listing, but there's some kind of, check mark or place to put that this is Amazon custom. And so then that triggers Amazon to know that there's certain words that are always going to be changing. So like a spot to put your name or a spot to put your profession or, you know, whatever word is going to be changing in the listing, there's a spot where the person can type in what they want. So once that goes through, then you can integrate it with some kind of company that could fulfill it for you. So print tech is the easiest one right now to integrate with. And, um, they once that order comes in, they can make whatever it is that you need made. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's it's pretty nice because you know right now with merch shirts, I'm having to upload any variation. So if I want it to be a mom shirt and a grandma shirt and an aunt shirt and a whatever shirt, I have to upload each of those separately. With Amazon Custom, you just make the design and then you put like a spot for someone to put in mom or grandma or aunt. Um, so it, it makes it so you don't have to upload quite so many listings um, and the person gets a completely personalized item. Well, I'm going to have to look into that. I, I've heard about, I've heard uh, Brianna talk about print tech. So that's what she was talking about. Okay. Yep. And Chris, Chris Green did one too. He made it private. So it was like you had to, um, I signed up for it and listened from, from him. I mean, he's always, he's always good with the cutting edge stuff. So I'm always, anything he puts out, I'm like <laughs> all about it. Um, but same with Brianna, obviously. I mean, she's the one I bought all my designs from. So both of them are talking about it. It's it's a really good thing to get into for Q4, for sure. What would you say of like for the like the people who are just on tier 10, what would you say um, like a strategy they should do? Should they make their own design? Should they buy their own designs or? Um, There's definitely no one size fits all. I mean, in the beginning, you're on tier 10. I mean, there's only 10 shirts you can do. So it's not gonna take that long to make 10 shirts. I mean, unless you're like me that's terrified and just stares at the computer. But I mean, if you're actually doing it and using these apps, there's a lot more tools than back then. Like there's a lot of apps and a lot of things that have popped up that make it a lot easier. Um, and there's so much training. And I mean, you know, like when we first started, there wasn't any of this. So it was a little more intimidating. You're like, photo like I was like, Photoshop, I don't want to have to learn this whole new thing. Now it's like so many easy little things you can do. Um, but I mean, just why not try it? I mean, if you're not afraid to make it and you have all these resources to make the design yourself, just try it and see if they sell. If they don't sell, then the next thing you could try is buying them from someone, see if those sell better. Um, but it's just experimenting, seeing what works for you. It's, it's a combination of research. I mean, if you put up a, I love cats shirt and there's thousands of them, you know, it might not sell, but if you do a little more research and you find something that's a little, less saturated, um, you'll have better luck. Where, and where, where do you think is a good place to start um, researching it? Um, I mean, there's tools for everything, but in the beginning you might not want to spend money. I mean, it really depends on your situation. If you're like, if you're like me who did it on the side, like I was doing another job. So I was doing Amazon RA, but, um, if you have a job in this, you know, maybe you're full time somewhere, and this is on the side and you have money to spend, then Merch Informer is good like that. You can do really good research. Um, there's lots of places you could buy designs from. Um, if you don't want to spend any money, there's a lot of Chrome extensions you can use. So Keywords Everywhere is the one that I use. I think that was free. Um, and you just type in words like you just type in um, whatever it is and you can see how many people are searching for that term. And then you can also look so you just basically you just go on Amazon, you have the keywords everywhere extension in there, you type in the word on Amazon, keywords everywhere will tell you how many other people search that every month. And then you'll be able to see 
on Amazon, like how many shirts are listed for that. So it'll show you. And then you can just keep experimenting um, and combine words together, see if anybody searches for that. I'm gonna have to write that down, keywords everywhere. I don't know if I have that. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. I mean, I'm still fairly new with the research, so there's probably better ways, but that's that's how I started with it. And then of course, Merch Informer is amazing. I have that now, so. Um, you need to you need to start owning all this. You're at the four thousands here now. I know. I gotta start having <laughs> more confidence. Yeah. Well, I I think I think that's one reason that people have liked our show because so many people are so good with having like this like exuding all this confidence, like they're some kind of superhero. <laughs> and it's like with us, it's just like this is where we are. Like, and we all come at it from different angles. So it's like people can relate, like people can understand like, Oh, I relate to Helen. I relate to Michelle. I relate to Brianna. So whoever you relate to your, your person's on that show. So <laughs> it yeah. helps a lot. And it's like, my confidence will grow over time. But right now it's like, you know, I, I did do the strategy of pricing things low. So I'm not a millionaire. I'm not like just, you know, riding around in fancy cars and stuff like that. So you know, over time, as I make more money, I'll probably, you know, confidence will grow with that. But in the meantime, it's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Like this is, I'm in the nitty gritty, like just loading up the shirts, doing my best. You know who does that strategy too, where they price low? You know who does that? Yeah. RJ. 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 I think a lot of people do it and they're just quieter than the people that don't do it. Like it's, yeah. it's better to be like, Oh, I sell shirts at 22 99 instead of being like, Oh, I sell shirts at 12 99. Like it just sounds better. Yeah. You know, it's, it's more exciting. Like if, if I say, Oh, I pray shirts at 12 99 and it'll be like, Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? Like, how and are the, you? Making yeah. And so the reason, whole reason he does it is just to get that first sale. Yeah. He does a strategy of the first sale and then increasing the price, which I think that's a fair strategy. Like I, I would definitely, if I was giving advice, I would say do it his way. <laughs> but I still like to keep it low for a little bit longer because I, I have found that it does slow down the sales if you increase it. Like everybody finds different things. But for me, at least in the beginning, if you really only have one sale and then you increase it, you'll still sell it, but it'll be at a slower pace. At least that's been my experience. So if I keep it a little longer and get like at least 10 sales, you're like really established at that point. Like Amazon's like, oh, people buy this shirt. So it's like you kind of have this uh, momentum going. So then if you increase the price, it doesn't slow it down as much. Like you're able to increase it and still have the same sales. So for me, I like to keep the price low. I mean, I'm going on two years with the price slow. <laughs> so what's, I'm, I'm going like, to be first yeah. increasing the price is this September. So we'll, it'll be exciting to see what happens. What's like one of your shirts? What's like the most um, sales it probably has? Oh, gosh. I looked the other day. I have, I think I have five shirts that are over 50 sales each. Wow. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of shirts in the like 20 sales range. Wow, that's really good. Um, and I have shirts that have, I think it's really hard for me to keep track of the reviews. Like there's yeah. whoever's a developer, somebody out there, please make some kind of thing that shows us all the shirts that have reviews. Cause I have to kind of click on them and like, I just usually don't spend time doing it, but I know of at least one shirt that has four reviews and I know of a lot of shirts that have two reviews. So that's been my goal is just to get reviews and get sales. Cause I mean, I'm not basing this on, on anything, so I could be wrong, but in my opinion, if you've had at least 10 sales on a shirt, it gives you a lot more leeway where you can increase the price. Like there's something about having the number of sales and having customers click on it and buy it to kind of get your shirt, established and Amazon is like, Oh, this is a good shirt. And you know, it's going to be around too, because I posted the other day on a shirt that I like posted like in the first month or two on merch and it sold the other day. And that was the whole reason I posted it. And I was like, I post, I put this up like two years ago and it's still, you know, I think yeah. it's only made like five sales total, but <laughs> it's it made, that, it made that initial sell and it's still on there. So once yeah. it's, sold, it's stuck like on. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely. I would hundred percent say put your shirt low when you first put it up. I mean, there are people who are very successful who do not follow that strategy. They price high right from the beginning. Yeah. I think Brianna is one of those people. She prices high right from the beginning, but, um, 
to me, RJ is right on. Like you want to have that first sale because as long as your shirt doesn't fall off, you're golden. Like you have that shirt up forever and you can play around with it later, increase the price later, add keywords later. But mm -hmm. just having that first sale is so important. Um, you get that sale and then you, then you can play with the price, you know? Yeah. But you really want to make sure you get that first sale because otherwise you'll have to deal with like uploading shirts again or having so many shirts fall off and it's just it's not worth it it wastes your time i wish um amazon would put like what shirts have sold and almost would if they would put like the stars on each shirt that shows reviews that'd be awesome oh my god it'd be amazing like there yeah. has to be a way to figure out your reviews because that's one of my main things i'm focusing on and i have no idea how many shirts have reviews yeah. i mean when you're looking at your shirts you don't know what you want to sold unless you like really know that shirt i mean even and if it doesn't even show like if you're on the manage tab of merch there's okay. nowhere where it shows you have to click on the shirt and go to the amazon page and I don't want to be clicking on my shirts every day. Like, I don't know if that lowers the <laughs> yeah. anything, you know? So I, every so often I'll check or I'll be like, wow, this is selling a lot. Somebody must have left a review and I'll click on it. And sure enough, somebody left a review. So we need to get uh, somebody to make an extension or something. I ask everybody. I, I ask the pretty merch guy. I ask everybody to make that. So hopefully one of them, it must be difficult. There must be something about it that's, that's not easy. Um, cause I have, I've definitely asked everyone. Oh yeah. One last thing. Did you, didn't you say that your dad can, is like an engineer? Yes. yes. He, uh, he works at at t and he has worked there since I was born. So he just had his 35th anniversary, um, this month, actually it's 35 years. He's been working at at t and, um, which is amazing cause they've done so many layoffs over the years that it's like, no one has worked at that company that long. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so he he majored in computer science when computers filled up an entire room like they were they, there was no personal computers. So he um, definitely has and he's kept up. So a lot of people, they never kept up like they would learn maybe the next thing, but they wouldn't learn the next thing after that. Like he's kept up like that field has changed so much over the years mm -hmm. and he's kept up with every new program and every new thing that comes out. So he's just as good as the people coming out of college, except now he also knows all the stuff in the past, too. So if if some company has a older computer system, he's going to know how to fix their programs. So he he pretty much knows all programs that have existed. <laughs> Wow. So he, he's amazing. Um, and he watches our show and he's he's definitely excited about merch. So I've been trying to get him to make things, but he's very busy. First of all, he's I'm the oldest of eight kids. So he still has a kid that is in high school. Can you believe that? Wow. I'm 20 years older than my youngest sister. <laughs> so, so he um, he works a lot of hours with at t and then um, he does work from home. So that's nice. But he has a little bit of time and I keep telling him, I'm like, this is a huge opportunity, like do it. So we'll see, I'm still uh, still working on him. He doesn't have a lot of time to- How cool would that be to say, is it possible to make a highlight of which sales sold and which ones have reviews? Yeah. Wow, you know people, oh man, everybody would buy that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, so we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll keep working on him, but yeah. he, um, he would like to be able to retire at 65 and then do his own thing after that. So he's like seven years away. So we'll see what comes out in seven years from now. He'll be all over it then. But Say, uh, you merch will be, yeah, merch will be uh, way saturated probably, but there'll be some, some new thing that he'll do. You could say, um, no, well, I, I, you know, all these have been around for a long time. And I think the more, I think it might become saturated, but the more products that Amazon's going to find, because they love adding products yeah. to sell. So yeah. who knows, maybe in seven years, Merch will have like 50 products that people can list on. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't mean like it'll, like, I definitely think like I like it and I think I'll still be selling shirts in seven years. So it's not necessarily saturated for the individual shirts you have listed, but I'm just talking about like the tools and stuff. Like there'll be so many tools that are created between now and seven years from now that he might not be able to like come up with some new tool, but maybe he will. I mean, there's always new things people need. So it's kind of neat because it's um, you you'll, you always hear like maybe a long time ago, people invented stuff for different things, but like we're seeing people like invent stuff for merch like all the time. I know. It's so cool. I'm, I'm just, I feel so like happy that I, found all of these people and get to see it's is so inspiring seeing the stuff people have created and invented and 
you know, even somebody like Neil, it's like seeing how he just decided to start Merge Informer and just ran with it. And it's just gotten so good over the years. So it's, it's really inspiring seeing what everyone's doing. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Helen, for being on the show today. And I, it was a, I think it was a great show. Oh, thank you so much. It was so fun talking to you.